The scene is tranquil. Cabins overlooking a lake like an image from a famous watercolor painting. Families spending their lives in peace and serenity. That is how it looks, but looks can be deceiving. Schofield Reservoir in the Manti Lasalle Mountains, about a half hour northwest of Price, Utah, along Highway 6, is a pleasant lake, perfect for fishermen both summer and winter. Here in the public halls and town meetings, though, fishing Schofield is not on the agenda. What is could mean the difference between a picturesque experience on the lake for cabin owners or no cabins at all. The government contends that, that they've owned this property since the mid-40s, and that's what they keep saying all the time uh, when the dam was built. Well, I am a property owner up there. Uh, fortunately, um, my cabin lies above the line, but my, some of my relatives' cabins are below the line. And so it impacts my family tremendously in the event that the uh, alleged claims by the Bureau are, are, are valid. The line, the difference between having a cabin and potentially tearing it down. Families like the Mancinas and Milovichs have held deeds on their property for over 50 years, paying taxes, improving buildings, and enjoying summers on the lake. The problem arises with the fact that dating all the way back to 1927, multiple deeds were produced and sold with varying levels of legality. Now, current landowners, many of which are no longer the original title holders, face losing their land because by some accounts, they never owned it in the first place. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation claims federal ownership, which is backed by the 10th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. On top of that, perhaps dozens of cabins and homes around the reservoir may pose a threat to the survival of the dam itself if the area were ever hit by a massive flood. If some of the traders or, or other um, structures would, would float off their, their footings and actually float over to the entrance to the spillway, there's a potential for plugging off the spillway. And then as the flood is passing through that spillway, it couldn't get out the spillway, the water would be inhibited overtop the dam and potentially fell the dam and, and uh, risk thousands of lives downstream. They're claiming that we've got this 100-year flood capability, but there again, there's a lot of debris that would be uh, needed to be brought into that idea. And if we ever had a flood, there's a lot of timber above that ground and federal forests that are not being managed today. Forest land, it's, it's, it's the responsibility of the federal government it has a roadless issue in it, so we can't go in and timber it. All of that debris is going to come down to that lake as well. Other issues arise for the questionable cabins in the form of private docks that sit on public lands. These areas are not in dispute and are recognized as federally controlled. The docks impede the public from using those sections of water and beach. From private docks and public waters to families buying and improving property in good faith, both sides present legitimate arguments and their fair share of passion. Luckily, it seems residents and the Bureau of Reclamation are both willing to negotiate to find a fair resolution outside of the courts. I hope we can find a solution which will um, at least work for everyone. Nobody probably gets everything they want, but, but at least something that will solve our problem and maybe something that isn't uh, some sort of of alternative solution for, for those that are there. Uh, the reality is no one wins in a court of law. Uh, it's costly to both sides, and somebody always comes out a winner and a loser. Hopefully we can get a negotiated settlement that is, is appropriate for everyone along the lake. I'd just like to see government take a serious look at our rights to use federal lands. And if this is truly federal lands, what rights do these people have that's been paying taxes on this federal land for all these years? My question to the government was, if they've known they've owned this property since the mid-40s, why would they allow good tax-paying citizens like us and everybody at this meeting to invest millions of dollars in structures and, and maintenance and then just take it away from us? It just didn't make sense to me. The Bureau of Reclamation is not reticent about their position and short of the overall safety of the dam is willing to do whatever is necessary to help the affected owners. Their plan is for a group of residents to come together with the BOR and plot out a path that will meet everyone's needs. The tranquility of Schofield is unquestioned. 
how the dispute plays out over the coming months and years will decide whether that tranquility will continue for dozens of families caught in the crossfire. From the trailhead, I'm Don Dunmore.